Despite being bigger and far more complex, today's workplaces are the most environmental and safety conscious workplaces in all of history. With corporate commitment from the top down, risks and hazards are readily identified, often eliminated, or at the very least, managed with a high degree of control. This will only be maintained through a continuous process of monitoring and evaluation, awareness and empowerment, and most of all, a heightened sense by all in the workplace of the potential for accidents and incidents to occur in any circumstance, under any conditions, and at any time. With this in mind, we ask that you pay particular attention to the following video. Sometimes referred to as sewer gas, sour gas or swamp gas, hydrogen sulphide gas or H2S as it is more readily known, is an extremely hazardous and toxic compound. It usually presents to us in the form of a gas. H2S is colourless and in large concentrations odourless. To make matters worse, it is also extremely flammable with a low ignition point of only 260 degrees. To put that into some perspective, the tip of a cigarette burns at approximately 700 degrees. H2S has a high flammability range, with ignition possible anywhere from 4.3 to 46% gas to air ratio. In other words, H2S is easily ignited in almost any conditions. H2S occurs naturally as a result of decaying organic matter, particularly in low oxygen environments. You are therefore likely to encounter H2S in sewers, mines, hot springs and of more relevance to your workplace in conjunction with entry into geological formations during the process of oil and gas extraction, both on and offshore. With a vapour density of 1.19, Hydrogen sulphide is approximately 20% heavier than air. So this invisible and potentially odourless killer will gravitate and pool at the lowest possible points, like pits, holds, tanks and depressions, etc. H2S is soluble. It will remain confined within water, oil, sludge or mud until it is agitated, depressurised or heated at which point it will then rapidly expand and mix with the available air. Consequently, it is usually encountered in work areas like the shakers or the drill floor. Other primary zones for H2S detection include the BOP, moon pool, pump room and pit room. However, if gas is known to be present, all areas should be viewed as potential collection points. For measuring purposes, we use parts per million, PPM. So when a description or measure of gas is made, it refers to how many parts or units of gas are present in a million units of air. 10 ppm therefore means that there are 10 units of gas present in every 1 million units of air. Hydrogen sulphide has a very low odour detection threshold. Even at low concentrations, well below one part per million, its rotten egg smell is often perceptible. The odour does increase as the gas becomes more concentrated, up to about 30 parts per million. Above this level, and up to around 100 parts per million, the gas is purported to have a sickly sweet odour. At concentrations above 100 parts per million, your ability to detect H2S is affected by a rapid paralysis of the olfactory nerves in the nose, leading to a loss of the sense of smell. In effect, at this level the gas is undetectable to the human nose. This means that when H2S is present in dangerously high concentrations, it has no perceivable odour. Prolonged exposure to lower concentrations can also result in a loss of the sense of smell. This unusual property of hydrogen sulphide makes it impossible and extremely dangerous to rely on your sense of smell to warn of the presence of the gas. The primary route of entry into the body is through inhalation, through the nose and mouth. If H2S is inhaled in low quantities, the body can break it down. 
However, over time, or in high concentrations, the body will not break it down fast enough, leading to paralysis of the respiratory system. H2S is classed as a chemical asphyxiant, similar to cyanide. It kills by inhibiting cellular respiration and therefore the uptake of oxygen, resulting in biochemical suffocation. Let's take a look now at the typical exposure symptoms. At low concentrations, 0 to 10 parts per million, you will feel an irritation of the eyes, nose and throat. You will also experience its potent rotten egg smell. At moderate concentrations, that's 10 to 50 parts per million, you may experience headache, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, coughing and difficulty in breathing, and you now may no longer be able to smell the gas. At high concentrations, 50 to 200 parts per million, you will experience severe respiratory tract irritation, eye irritation, shock, convulsions, coma, and eventually death. In extreme concentrations, 300 parts per million and over, death is rapid. Prolonged exposure, even at lower levels, can lead to bronchitis, pneumonia, migraine headaches, pulmonary edema, and the loss of motor coordination. In short, H2S is a gas that is invisible, undetectable to the human nose, extremely deadly, and highly flammable in almost any concentration. H2S is also highly corrosive to certain metals and may cause a build-up of iron sulphide within steel pipe. Should moisture be removed from this compound, it may spontaneously combust, burning on its own. The corrosive nature of the gas may result in the progressive weakening of pipes and fittings, thereby increasing the likelihood of leaks, leading to an increased potential for exposure incidents. Sound maintenance and planning is required to manage this risk. H2S is often disposed of by burning or flaring off. When burned, it produces another deadly gas known as sulphur dioxide or SO2. Most countries have legal limits in force that govern the maximum allowable levels of exposure to H2S in the workplace. A typical permissible exposure limit in many countries is 10 parts per million. However, your workplace safety officer will inform you of the permissible working exposure levels as they pertain to your particular circumstances. While the distinctive odour of H2S is easily detected at low levels, its ultimate sensory fatigue effects means that your nose cannot be relied on as a warning device. The only reliable way to determine exposure levels is to measure the amount of H2S in the air through the use of monitoring systems. The various systems include personal monitors, portable monitors and fixed point monitoring systems. Regular monitoring will help to identify areas and operations likely to exceed permissible exposure limits. Any areas that routinely pose overexposure hazards must be equipped with continuous monitoring systems. The use of direct reading gas detection instrumentation is therefore required before entering confined spaces such as manholes, tanks and pits, etc. Where engineering controls cannot adequately manage the level of exposure, it may be necessary to supplement them with the use of suitable personal protective equipment, such as supplied air respirators. A qualified industrial hygienist or a H2S safety professional should be consulted for guidance on the suitability and correct use of respirators. Your workplace will be equipped with one or more of the following. Self-contained breathing apparatus. Supplied air breathing apparatus. Emergency life-saving apparatus. Wherever possible, exposure should be minimised by employing adequate engineering controls, including hot work permits and safe working practices, inclusive of buddy systems. Should a co-worker ever be overcome by H2S gas, do not attempt a rescue until you are properly protected yourself. The rescuer can very easily get caught out by venturing into a gas-affected zone without adequate protection. Remember, at levels above 200 parts per million, collapse, coma and death due to respiratory failure can occur within seconds and after only a few inhalations. 
so you can be very quickly overcome yourself. Such incidents are sadly all too common and only serve to make a successful rescue all the more difficult. Your workplace will be fitted with gas alarms and have detailed emergency response procedures contained within your workplace procedures manuals. Your H2S briefing officer will advise you on your workplace specific procedures following this presentation. You should take the time to ensure you fully understand the current H2S risks in your workplace and the correct procedures and responses in relation to H2S exposure, alarms and emergency procedures. Thank you for your time and remember, don't mess with H2S. At RigVids we produce safety, training and induction films in all languages in any format for use anywhere in the world. Thank you for your time. We hope to hear from you.